dumbfounded by the deceased joy and merriment that once filled the streets. The gawking strangers that would at one time loom and loiter, basking in the radiance of Mother Nature's diminishing constitution. Only echoes remain of the once bellowing laughter of young lovers, dressed in Sunday's best summer silks, with the scent of artificial bouquets and sweat. Each passerby appeared to be catching the eye of another, unbeknownst to them whether they'd become the apple or the tear in the lifetime near called autumn, or fall, as they may well have. I, for one, dream of the day someone somehow could look at me the way they do. But that would require participation on both parts, and a sacrifice of my own heart which I am unwilling to leave unchained. For once that gate has been opened, off would run my emotions like a small child high on life and granny's licorice delights, ignorant of the inevitabilities that what goes up must come down. Be it sugar crash or couples clash of heavy-handed hearts on sleeves, when half-honest truths are spoken only in sooth, anticipating the unruly decline of the partner's love line, never again to hold hands, only grudges to be taken to the grave and become a slave to the bitter resentments against the one you once called home. And now you're grown, you believe it's known the inaccuracies of Shakespeare's verse, for it is surely worse to have loved than to never love at all.